All right, YouTube Repo Man 64. Coming back on here to uh, show you, sorry about that, more about this concealed day. It is not the moon. It has nothing to do with the moon. It's been around for so long that it's like in every it's ingrained into society that the moon has something to do with the new month and um i've challenged several people to go into the bible and study the word yarich and see if that's used whatsoever which means moon um look at the word rosh chodesh does not mean moon it means new month but the word kase spelled two different ways why is the word kase spelled two different ways? One with an S, one with a C. It is in Strong's Concordance as H3677. And the reason it is is because there are two head of the years. There's the one on September the 15th, which is Rosh Hashanah. But then in Exodus 12, God moved it back exactly 182 days. Two. March 17th, the new head of the year. Now, the day before that is the last Sabbath. There are only 364 days in a year. There are not 365 and a quarter. What they've done is remove four minutes a day. You can go look it up. It's called a side reel day. They, they tell you that they did it. There are not 365 and a quarter days in a year, but it resets and they can't stop that from happening on March the 16th a Sabbath, and September the 14th, a Sabbath, both high Sabbaths. We have, 12 com we have 10 commandments. One of those commandments is to find the Sabbath and keep it holy. And that's the one commandment that we say, eh, if we keep that, we're following the law. No, that commandment changed because Jesus rose on a Sunday. There's a bunch of different reasons why they're not following that Sabbath. But... I'm telling you that we are supposed to find that Sabbath. Now, I'm going to give you a date of that Sabbath, an exact moment in time when that Sabbath happens. Am I saying that that's the rapture? No. Do I think that the rapture is very, very close? I do. Is it possible, which I don't see why or how, God will use what the world is viewing as Rosh Hashanah, possible, but I don't, I don't personally don't see how. Of course, if the moment passes and nothing happens, we could just be wrong about when it is, or I could be wrong about, well, I'm not wrong about the moon, but I could be wrong about whether God would use that just to drive them to jealousy. So I'm going to give you an exact day. I'm going to give you an exact time that I think the rapture might occur. I am not saying that this has to happen, and if it doesn't, da, 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 I'm not saying that, because I'll never set an exact day and time, which I know I just said I'm about to. But what I'm saying is this exact day and time is the Sabbath. It is the moment where the Sabbath begins. It is exactly uh, the same point every single year. It never changes. Just like your birthday never changes. And, and, the, and, and I've been in, <laughs> I've been in Cool Cat's uh, uh, comment section. I get quite a ribbing in there. What I'm looking at has nothing to do with astrology. It is astronomy. Remember, God created the heavens. We're looking up at the heavens because of the canvas that he wrote the story that he wrote up in the sky and and satan did attempt callers all crooked satan did come in and hijacked a lot of things that god created god created the moon he created the sun he created the stars but i believe that satan came in and said let's worship the moon and we'll use that as a, a point of when the feast days are i can prove that 2,400 years ago, they did not use the moon and that um, it's 
2,400 years ago, they did not use the moon, but then they started, and now you can't get it out of out of society. You can't get it out of their minds. So, yes, we're I'm looking at a specific day and time. I'm not saying it's the rapture, but I'm really hopeful. With everything that's going on and everything that everybody's found, I'm I'm not the only one finding stuff. Everybody's finding stuff. Um, with all the things that they found, um, it looks like we're in it right now. So I'm going to give you my synopsis on what I think it is. And I want to uh, remind you that when you read your Bible and it uses a word, you must go back to the original language to see if that word holds up. Again, new moon is not found in the original Greek and Hebrew text. It's not there. The word they use is kase. Kase has nothing to do with the moon. It's an appointed time and a hidden day. One spelled with an S, one spelled with a C. And it's super important that just because everybody looks at something and says it's right, it's not always right. Again, knowing this is not salvation. Salvation, there is only way, well, only one way to be saved, and that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. That is accepting that free gift. That is believing that he died for your sins and that he will raise you up in the last days. So there's a, going to be a rapture. Now, another word that's being used, and I see it all the time, in Second Thessalonians is, it says very clearly that we have to see this great falling away and we have to see the man of sin being revealed. We see that. And you are correct. You are correct for the saints. The word used that everybody misses is the word gathered. That word has nothing to do with caught up, rapture, harpazo. It has nothing to do with it. God at this moment in Second Thessalonians is speaking to the saints. The saints are super important. They're going to heaven. God is going to save them. It is a great multitude that no man can count. It's huge. But in 1 Thessalonians, it doesn't talk about any of that stuff. It's simply, boom, a rapture. You'll see it caught up in there. And then it starts speaking about these troubles and these worrisomes. And Jesus over here, don't go. Jesus over there, don't go. These are the deceptions that are going to take place after the rapture. So... The rapture, there's only one. After that, how many gatherings there are, I don't know. There's probably several gatherings. Uh, according to Wayne over at We Are the Overcomers, he has a very good video out showing that there are several gatherings, not just a rapture. So, I'm going to go through this and I'm going to make my case that we are not to follow the moon and that the reason they are is because of some misguided notions from the Romans back in the day, 400 BC, Antichus forced this on the Jewish people. I'm going to show you a website that you can go to and read all about it yourself. Again, I didn't find this stuff. All I did was put it on a timeline. That's what I did. A lot of this information I found out there. Now, you say, it's not in the Bible, though, but it is. It's, it is in the Bible. Kase is in the Bible. New Moon is not. Even though it says it, they've translated it from a bad translation. That's what I'm trying to say is there are mistakes. There are things that were added and taken away. There's going to be punishment for, for that. Now, God's all-powerful. Why would he allow such a thing? Why would he allow everybody to look at the moon for over 2,400 years? I feel it's the same reason he would allow everyone to think that Jesus was born on, on December the 25th. But that was the day he was conceived. He was born on September the 29th at nightfall going into September the 30th. And I can prove that. Um, why did he allow this to happen? There's a, for, and Again, everything goes back to the Bible. I find this information and then I make sure that the Bible is not contrary to what it says. Why did God allow us to not know about 
the head of the year. It's right in front. Of you. you can go into date and time right now and see that the day of equal parts happens on March 16th. You can go into Stellarium right now and see that four star Pegasus in 71.2 skirting along the horizon. At a certain point in Israel, they see this star. How does that happen on the same exact day? How does that happen? You can see that God turned time back to March in Exodus 12. So all this information is in the Bible. So why did he allow it to happen? I found a excerpt on it, uh, a writing on it, and they basically have a very good argument that Satan did not understand the cross. Not at all. If he had, he would have never crucified Jesus. If he had just laughed at Jesus and, and then like when Jesus, like now, right now, this is, this is exactly why we are kind of the way we are now. It's because of Satan. We laugh at everything. Everything's silly. It doesn't make sense to me, so I don't believe it. And so Satan must have been like, oh, man, I just saved the entire planet. Now, he didn't do it. Jesus did. But I just contributed to that by crucifying this guy, and I thought I was just getting rid of him. He did not understand the cross. He probably still doesn't understand the cross. And so why did... Why is this date? There's, again, Kasei and Kasei, both spelled almost the same, one with an S and one with a C. One of them means appointed day, and the other one means concealed day, which I don't know. I just assigned it myself on my timeline, but which I actually don't know. I'm still studying that. But he did it because Satan cannot know exactly when the rapture will occur. He cannot know that. Now, after the rapture occurs, everybody is going to be jumping into their Bibles, a great multitude that no man can count. They are going to jump in there so hard and firm and try to figure this out. The second the rapture occurs, they're going to write that time down, and they're going to know from that moment that they need to start counting. How long? I can't quite figure it out. Is it going to be seven days, three days, 50 days, 40 days? I don't know. I have no clue. Is it going to be one year and 10 days, like the amount of time Noah spent on the ark? I really don't know. I've, I've tried and tried and tried. That's one thing I can't get to the bottom of as to how long the saints will be here. I personally don't believe they're going to be here for three and a half years. I don't see that. Um, the reason is I don't is because God turns his attention back to Israel. Daniel's 70th week is not for the bride. It's not for the saints of the tribulation. It is for the Jew. God loves the Jew. He loves them, but they just will not line, fall in line. They just will not accept Jesus yet. Satan has done a very good job concealing Jesus from them. But remember, we have good news. At the end, at the end of it, um, the Jews are going to weep and they're going to look up. And they're going to realize the one that they pierced. And that is what the purpose of tribulation is for. Where the great multitude come in, for me, it is a short period of time from the rapture to the gathering. I know there's verses in there that says they will have to have their heads cut off for their faith. I, I know that and I see that. But there might be more than one gathering. This, I, I don't know. I don't know. Wayne has a, a much better grasp on that than I do. This is my thing. Timelines are my thing. When it starts is my thing. I discovered this years ago and built this timeline and have refined it and found all the stories, well, not all, many stories in the Bible and put it all on a timeline. And I'm telling you right now, Everything falls into place like a puzzle. It will not do that on the moon. It will not, if, not if, the fact that Jesus went to the cross, I'm sorry, the fact that Jesus was, where's, where, actually, let me go in here so I can see it better. Right here. Jesus is, uh, Mary conceives on December the 25th. Oh, it's the flood. Hold on. I'm looking. The, here's the, here's the, uh, that's what I'm going for. The ark door opens. Noah sits seven days at the entrance. And that's the day that Methuselah died. Let's go look for number two. Where did it go? Is it down here? Where's number two at? 
Uh, oops. I've lost number two. That's the hard part about when it starts to fill up like this, it's hard to see. Number two, oh, flood begins. Apparently, we didn't write it. Number two is not there, but number two is where the flood begins. The flood begins on Halloween. Now, imagine my surprise when I start the year off like I understand it to be on the day of equal parts, the four-star algae skirting along the horizon, and the flood actually lands on a day where the entire planet looks at this day as a day of ominity. It's a, it's a, it's a very ominous day. It's a day that uh, everyone recognizes in every culture. This also from this day, using our calendar and using the any time using this timeline, any other timeline, it will not work. Will not. You will not land on the cross. You will not land on Nissan 14. Won't happen. 150 days from this point. 153 days from this point. Is that, uh, I think there's a little mistake there. I think it's 150 days. Let me go look at an old timeline. I believe that's 150 days from that point. Let's see here. Now I have it there too. Five months. Need not to flood. Five months in days. I'll have to uh, to recheck that. But it's 150 days from the flood and 153 days. What am I doing wrong here? Let me go back here. 150 days after the flood, the water resides. Oh, I see. It's th it's three days earlier. The Bible just says 150 days. There is no event uh, down here three days earlier. So 150, 150 days after the flood begins, the water begins to recede. And 153 days, which is the seventh month and 17th day on the Noah timeline, on the timeline before the flood, that's the day the ark rests. Remember, the ark is all the way up in the air, just hovering above Mount Ararat, and the water begins to recede. Three days, it doesn't recede quickly. He's only a few feet off of the top of Mount Ararat because the bottom of the boat is also in the water by, I think we said, 12 or 15 feet. So let me go back to... The beginning of this okay let me start the video by by showing you that march 16th and september the 14th are actually the day that is the sabbath that's the sabbath that you were supposed to find that's the sabbath you were supposed to keep holy if you knew those two sabbaths you could walk into the holy of holies and not die you wouldn't have to have a rope tied around you if you start your year on march 16th if you jump it around, and I can't for the life of me when I say, don't do this, don't jump it around. It's, it's your birthday is on a specific day, every single year, a specific date. Now, of course, the Gregorian calendar I showed you is, is moving time by one and a half days a year. So it changes every year, the day, but not the amount of time in a year. They can't get away from how much time there is actually in a year, 364 days. So. If you knew your Sabbath, you would know when the start of the year was back in March, and you would know when the start of the year is here in sub uh, February. Uh, and sorry, in September. In September, the start of the year, Rosh Hashanah will be on September the 15th. It'll be on September the 15th. All right. Let me get into the pictures, and we'll go through this, and, and I'll show you a little bit about where my mind is. You can go find this. Now, everything I'm showing you, other people have done this work. I built this timeline based on the day out of time, long before I ever saw any of these things. Finding these things has only confirmed my timeline. That's the, that's the only thing that finding these things after the fact has confirmed my time. I did not build my timeline after finding these things. As a matter of fact, this, this one here I just found uh, yesterday. And so, let's read. Psalms 81, 3 is a scripture frequently quoted by those striving to keep the biblical calendar. The Hebrew word chodesh, Strong's 2320, is used for the month 
or new month in the Bible. Almost every calendar researcher agrees with that. Everybody believes that. Everybody knows that Chodesh means new month. It does not mean new moon. Everybody knows that. Almost every calendar researcher agrees with that. Most would say a new month is the same as new moon and use moon observations or calculations to determine the start of a month. Unfortunately, there is no scripture that clearly says you will know when a new month begins because you will see or because you will calculate. Psalm 81.3 does not, uh, sorry, does appear to describe events related to a new moon, but it is not clear how they are related or even what is related. I know it says new moon in there in our Bible. And we've translated it from uh, the Hebrew or and the Greek, and it is a bad translation because what it actually says in there is Chodesh and uh, uh, what, did, what was the uh, Kase and Chodesh and Kase. It does not say Yarich. Yarich means new moon. So let me keep reading here. Who wants an article that explains why things are unclear? People who want the truth should want this article. Major portions of calendar systems have been based around this scripture alone. This is how they're justifying using the moon. If those system assumptions about this verse are wrong, then the whole system is wrong. To help understand the problem, we will quote this verse from Green's Interlinear. We will give the meaning of each Hebrew word in order that it appears, followed by the Strong's number in parentheses. Blow in the new moon, a ram's horn in the full moon on the uh, on day. I'm sorry, in the full moon on day our feast. You can see all those numbers, all those numbers, but what you don't see in there is 3394, which is Yarich, which is moon. Okay, some believe that the new moon here is the dark moon, or the first crescent, which would be the Feast of Trumpets Rosh Hashanah, and that the ram's horn was also blown on the full moon, which would be the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles, Numbers 10.10. However, Numbers 10.10 specifies silver trumpet, and this verse says ram's horn. Though different trumpets may not be an issue, others claim that Psalms 81.3 proves the first day of the month is the same thing as the full moon. You see how they'll argue back and forth. You'll have both camps. No, it's the first sliver. No, it's a full moon. I'm telling you, it's neither one of them. This is the most likely meaning of this verse, as there is no and connector between the words specifying that there are different events. But Hebrew grammar apparently allows separate, unconnected events, and ancient Israelites knew when months began, so they understood this verse. Unfortunately, the Hebrew word translated full moon, kase, Strong's 3677, is of uncertain meaning. It is completely different than yarich, Strong's 3394. The normal Hebrew word for moon, it only appears twice in the Bible, in Psalms 81.3, 81.4, in the Hebrew Bibles in Proverbs 7.20, where it is actually spelled slightly differently. Remember I said the C and the S? The usage in Proverbs is of little help in figuring out what the word means. Above it, it seems the NIV translators think say means full moon. The King James Version thinks it means appointed time. The uh, NKJV uh, translators are split half and half. The Jesenuous, Jesenuous uh, I can't read that word, and from the Christian book distributors, excerpt below says the root word means to cover and should have a sense of being hid, never covered with light.
this would fit in much better with Dark Moon or even the first crescent calendar research the translator would be. All right, so again, I brought this to you so you could see that the numbers just don't match. Yah reaches moon, period. Yah reaches moon, and Yah reach is not used in either of those verses. And Yah reach is 30, Strong's 3394. Kasei is Strong's H3677. You can see our translation here. This is why everybody is looking at it. I believe God allowed it because God is hiding that day from Satan. But for some reason, this is being revealed here in the last days, perhaps just for us to know. I, I, I don't know why it's being revealed right now. Uh, I, again, this is put on my heart years ago because I kept praying. I said, how, are we, how does it change? How does it, my birthday? Nothing changes. It never changes. How does it change? And I started researching, and then I found, the first thing I found was the day of equal parts. And I said, well, let me just do a timeline. Years ago, I did this. Let me just do a timeline for March 16th. Let me see how it lands. And then as I went through it, I was like, wait a minute. The flood lands on, on uh, Halloween? How crazy is that? And I just kept going all the way through. I'm like, hold on a second. Jesus was conceived on December the 25th and not born? And then I did the 40 weeks from there, and I and I, and exactly lands on um tabernacles i mean tabernacles is the only feast with eight days eight days later he was circumcised it just it just fell perfectly it's so beautiful it just fell perfectly into place i couldn't believe it so here we are in strong's the number h 3677 matches the hebrew kase which occurs two times in two verses in the wlc hebrew and how they've translated it is wrong, obviously. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon. It's supposed to say new month. In the time appointed, month, remember, is 2370, and Kasei is 3677. It is not the same. This, this is speaking of a hidden day, which just so happens to fall on the last Sabbath in March and the last Sabbath in September. In our solemn feast day, he hath taken a bag of money with him and will come at the day appointed, 3677. Again, I say, not moon. All right, here's a little study. And, and again, you can go to these websites and read this for yourself. Uh, this uh, Going through this does take time. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Yet another name for Rosh Hashanah is Yam HaKaseh, the day of hiding, or the hidden day. The term Kaseh or Kaseh, you see the two spellings there. They don't even understand fully what they're looking at yet. The problem is they don't know about the new year and when it moved in exactly 182 days. That's that's the problem that we're dealing with. The term kase or kase is derived from the Hebrew root kasa, which means to conceal, to cover, or hide. Every day during the month of Elul, a trumpet is blown to warn the people to turn back to God, except the 13th day. And I don't know why they throw that in there. There is no... Uh, anything on the 13th day of Elul that I can see that uh, would indicate this, uh, there is on the 14th day, I'm sorry, the 30th day of Elul, 15 days later, but that's the one thing that I was in, not in agreement with on this, uh, or what they were saying here. Preceding, pre the day preceding Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is on the 15th. So if, if they're blowing this um, not on the 14th, the 13th day of Elul, but on the 14th day of September, this would make sense. Uh, the 13th day of Elul has no, no bearing whatsoever that I can see. And is therefore silent. This is because much about Rosh Hashanah, Rosh, yeah, Rosh Hashanah is concealed and shrouded in mystery. The mystical aspect of Rosh Hashanah is indicated in scripture as sound the shofar on the new moon in 
concealment of the day of our festival. Satan the accuser is not to be given notice about the arrival of Rosh Hashanah, the day of judgment. Rosh Hashanah is called Yam HaKaseh, or the day of hiding, because it was hidden from Satan. The adversary, the Bible says that Satan comes to rob and to steal and to confuse because it is the day of judgment. It is symbolically hidden from Satan. Satan did not know and understand the plan of the cross. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2.7, uh, this was hidden from him as well. Believers never said when the day of Rosh Hashanah was, they simply said of that day and hour. No one knows, only the Father. One of the reasons most often given to disclaim that the resurrection of the dead and catching away of the believers is Rosh Hashanah is the statement given by Jesus in Matthew. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only, because Rosh Hashanah was understood to be the hidden day. This statement by Jesus is actually an idiom for Rosh Hashanah. Thus, it should be given as proof that he was speaking of Rosh Hashanah because Rosh Hashanah is the only day in the whole year that was referred to as the hidden day or the day no man knew. Rosh Hashanah takes place on the new moon. See, they're looking at the moon still in here. It's not. It's the four-star Pegasus skirting along the horizon exactly 10 days um, before um, what is it? Uh, day of Atonement, the day of equal parts. The moon can barely be seen as the cycle begins, but then the moon turns towards the sun and begins to reflect the light of the sun. The sun in the sky is a picture of Jesus, and the moon is a picture of the believers in the Messiah, and the sun has its own light, but the moon's light is a reflection of the sun. When we first become believers in Jesus, we can hardly be seen spiritually. We know very little about God, but then our lives begin revolving around the Messiah as the moon revolves around the sun. As we begin to turn more and more towards the center of creation, we begin to reflect that light more and more, just as the moon reflects the light from the center of the solar system. We can hardly be seen spiritually, and we know very little about God, but then our lives begin to revolve around Messiah as the moon revolves around the sun. As we begin to turn more, more, oh, I read that already, center of the solar system. So anyway, point being, it was concealed from Satan. I wanted to show you this. So, the four-star algae skirts along the horizon on this day. You notice the time. If it does, if, if that happens at 5.45, how are we going to see it? 5.45 p.m., how are we going to see it when the sun sets at 6.30? Remember, they changed time. Time was changed. It's not actually 6.30 p.m. It's actually 5.30 p.m. Here in March, at sunrise, they actually have time correct at this point. In March, this four-star will skirt along the horizon at, at 5.47 a.m., just before the sun rises. Now, when the four-star of algae of skirts along the horizon just before sunrise. This marks the head of the year now, like Exodus 12 said in March 17th. And then it moves forward to September or back if you, like God said, move it back to Exodus 12. But for us, it moves forward to September exactly 10 days and 12 hours. You see the time here is 5.48 a.m. The four star will skirt along the horizon at 5.40 7 p.m. in September, 10 and a half days. The distance between the two periods of time of the days of equal parts are exactly six months and 10 days and 12 hours. I can't get the 12 hours on here, but it's six months, 10 days, and 12 hours. September 26th is right at the Day of Atonement right after the 10 days of awe, which begin the first day on the 15th. Ten and a half days, it just reaches the 26th. Now, I wanted to show this to you again. On the 14th, on 914, which is, I think it's tomorrow, tomorrow 
at 5.45 p.m. in Israel, this star, Algenib, um, cool cat says it says Algenib, it's Algenib, is on the horizon at 71.2 degrees. This is their horizon. That's what skirts along. This day is a very hidden day because on this day, we do not have the day of equal parts. Do not have it in September. That will not happen for another 10 and a half days. So to know this day here, you will have had to start back here in March on the day of equal parts as well as see the star Algenib. Okay, so this is the day right here. This is the moment right here that they will see that star. And this is the very moment in the evening when it becomes the 15th. On September the 14th, at nightfall, it becomes in Israel, September the 15th. And September the 15th is always Rosh Hashanah. It never changes. You see the numbers up there, 71.2. If you go a day before, you can't see it. It's below the horizon. That's 71. 71.2 is above that. They cannot see this, this, this star of Pegasus skirting along the horizon. Here, on the 15th, one day after, on the Rosh Hashanah, it's at 71.4, almost at 72. It's way up in the sky already. The day already passed. That's how they knew. That's how they knew when to start this festival. It's, it showed them that the festival started immediately when it was here. At nightfall, it became exactly um, Rosh Hashanah. But they have to start here on 316. Now, these, these are Sabbath days. These are high Sabbath days on the 16th and on the 14th of September. The next day is always the first day of the year. Look at that. Happens again. You can go do it yourself. Go into Stellarium right now. On the horizon, 71.2 on March the 16th. On March the 15th, the day before, it is below the horizon. They cannot see it. On the day after, again, it's way above the horizon. It's not skirting along the horizon. So, and also we have an added benefact to this date. It is also the day of equal parts. On this day, there are exactly 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night. On this day, Lazarus died. On this day um, is the day that Jesus did not move for two days. He did not move for the 17th because it becomes the 17th. He did not move for the 17th or the 18th. And everyone has racked their brains out for years as to why didn't he move. He didn't move because he knew that Rosh Hashanah was moved back 182 days to the day of equal parts. That's why he makes the comment, are there not 12 hours in the day? He was telling us what day it was. It was March the 16th. This is the last Sabbath, or the, the last Sabbath of the year, and the first day of the year is March the 17th. This is it right here. That's why all of that is in there. That's why he didn't move for two days. That's why he makes the comment. That's why he says Lazarus has died, and he raises Lazarus on the 20th, four days later. That's it right there. The 15th below, the 17th way above. All right. You can go to enochcalendars.webs.com and find this. As a matter of fact, I did that. Uh, okay. So you can go in here and you can look at this and read this entire story. Now, I'll say this a thousand times. Enoch does not belong in the Bible. Enoch is for more information. Everything that I find, if I don't see it in the Bible or realize a mistake, I don't use it. I have found a lot of stuff that I don't use because I can't find it in the Bible. I can't find where the Bible might allude to it. I know New Moon is clearly wrong. There is no way it's right because. Yah reaches moon, and that is simply not used in the verses we're discussing. The, the man on a long journey takes a bag of money. It is simply not discussed there. It is not discussed there whatsoever. What they're discussing is Kasei, and I showed you what Kasei is. It's 
March the 16th, September the 14th. But you can go in here and see how they've messed with time for so long, and you can read this entire thing. So go to there and take a look at that. And in there, down towards the bottom, you'll find this. This is where I got to. These people did this work, not me. I simply, and, and again, I found this after I started my year on the Day of Equal Parts. That's what's prompted this whole thing. The Day of Equal Parts prompted this entire timeline from beginning to end. And as I studied, studied, then I find something like this. I'm like, whoa, somebody else has already found this. This is great. As far as I know, and I could be wrong, I am the only one that built a timeline of uh, the events that took place. I wanted to show you on 9.15 at 6 a.m. Remember now, at nightfall, it becomes the 15th at around 6 p.m. in Israel on the 14th. In Israel, 12 hours later, exactly 12 hours later, the child is leaving Virgo. From the moment the new year began, uh, nightfall, on the 14th, becoming the 15th at nightfall, 12 hours later, this child is coming out of the womb of Virgo. Exactly. Now, you see where the moon is. I've said this before. So we shouldn't follow the moon at all. Wrong. The moon is there to tell us exact moments in time. It is not to tell us when the beginning of the month or the beginning of the year or any of that. But when the Bible makes a direct reference to the moon, and I guarantee I haven't looked it, I should have looked it up. That would have been a good idea. Where the moon is under her feet, it's going to use the Strong's word, Yarich. It is not going to use Chodesh, Kasei, none of those things. It's going to use the word Yarich because that is how you say the moon in uh, the original language. Now, the moon will have to be down by her feet to show this Revelation 12 sign. Correct? Correct. But Jupiter left the womb back in 2017, long before the moon reached her feet, way long before. So what are we learning from that Revelation 12 sign and this Revelation 12 sign? We're learning that an event takes place before the moon is in place. Something happens. And I personally think it's the rapture that happens. I think the rapture happens before, I think her travail has something to do with the moon going down her constellation, her body to her feet. Before she travails, the child is born. I'm looking very intently at some point between September the 14th at nightfall in Israel and September the 15th at sunrise in Israel, what we would call sunrise. It's still the same day. September the, It became September the 15th in Israel at nightfall. At some point here in this 12-hour period of time, now for me here in Florida, that would be 1047 a.m. tomorrow until 1047 at nightfall uh, when th this, uh, the, the, you know, when the, when the, uh, Child is born from, from the, the Rosh Hashanah, from Rosh Hashanah beginning. So, I'm not saying, um, let me get on here. Let me have you look into my eyes. I am not saying that's the rapture. It is a very high watch day for me. And I'm very excited because, honestly, out of, I mean, we've looked at so many dates and all of them had good meaning. I'm telling you, every single one of them said, oh, that could be it, that could be it. But this particular one is the day of hiding. It is the Kase, and it does happen on September. And, and it will tell you, September the 14th is Kase. It's the day the man leaves with a bag of money, and he won't return until Kase, the appointed time. It means covering, and it means appointed time. One of them means appointed time, which I think is March, and the other one means Kase, hiding us, concealing us. And I think that is September the 14th. But if it passes, we're going to keep looking. If it passes, I'm going to have to sit back down and try to figure out personally what's going on. I can't see it. I personally can't see it. There's just too much going on right now, just with everything around us. It's just so much going on. I can't see that day passing. 
but we'll see, right? Happened before so many times. All right. Sister Sandy, and if you want a copy of this thing, you can go down here. Now, she has a website. This particular, uh, let me do, yeah, this particular uh, a link right here, it goes directly to this timeline. But she does have a website, and she does post in there for a lot of different watches. She created this website, and she did me such a favor. You know my scribbled out timeline? She did me such a favor, and she um, built this thing, and it's incredible. Um, I need to tell her to put that number two right there for Halloween. I got lost there for a second. Number two is Halloween. That's when the flood began. Um, but she has gone in, and she's she built this thing, and then I'm like, I could. I was doing a video. I said I couldn't find the Pentecost. Those are the Pentecost. That's when they happen, and when the Pentecost had fully come. That's why I'm thinking that that the that the saints of the tribulation personally, and I could be wrong. I could be very wrong. I mean, I believe I'll be in heaven and not super concerned about this, but right now on this side of eternity, I'm very concerned. And um for the saints of the tribulation, those people who am I love but just will not listen, those people who think I already got this. I, I I go to church. You don't go to church. You know how many churches I personally have walked out of just when they said something that just was so off base that no Christian should ever say. And and I've heard good Christians, well, if he prayed to God, he wouldn't have that disease. I'm like, What? Whoa, what did you just say? What's wrong with you? Yeah, I mean, God would not, no, no, that's literally not even biblical, not at all. We're all sinners. That's what, I, I got to say this, before you take a moment of pride and think you're special somehow and you've done something, bride, you haven't. You're Barabbas standing up there. You are guilty. You are guilty, guilty, guilty. You're standing up there next to Jesus going, this guy's going to take my place. He must have had a thousand thoughts running through his head while he stood up there. But the Bible records not one word out of the mouth of Barabbas. Barabbas was saved by Jesus. Barabbas, Jesus took Barabbas' place. Barabbas' destiny and rightful place, including all of us, was hell. Why did Jesus choose Barabbas to be up there? We don't know. Not because of anything you did. Not because of anything I did. I'm not special. But we, for some reason, we heard, we heard it. We don't know why, but we heard. I think I know why. God drew you and you listened. God handed you a gift and you received it. God called you and you did things after the fact. There will be no pride in heaven. Oh, I did it. I'm, I'm going to get to heaven. Look at this timeline I built. Yeah, I figured it all out on my own. No, no pride whatsoever in heaven. There will be none. Nobody will be able to stand up and say, yeah, well, I mean, you did 99.9%, .9%, but I still, no, you did nothing. Barabbas did nothing. We are all, every single one of us, destined for hell, except for Jesus went to that cross and paid the penalty for your sins. None of us are special. So I just want to clarify that. There will be no pride in heaven. You will not be able to get there and say, yeah, I figured this out. You didn't figure anything out. The Holy Spirit has been telling you things and you're telling others. If you see me go, if they see you go, just like Elisha saw Elijah go, so did the 50 prophets now. The rest of the world saw him go. But Elisha knew what happened. And the mantle came down to him, not to the 50. As a matter of fact, those 50 sent out uh, um, searchers to find the body of Elijah because they did not understand. They did not know what happened. And that's what they're going to do as soon as we're gone. They're going to be like, well, it had to be a nuclear blast. They, none of them were going to say what it was. But there's going to be this great multitude somehow that are going to come into understanding and they're going to show up at Seal 6, which I think pretty fast anyway let me get back into this sorry all right so she did an amazing timeline she put 
the concealing day. This is the day concealing. Now, I purposely, and I don't know if I'm accurate, I had a 50-50 shot at getting it right. I don't know, but Kase spelled with an S. This is the four-star alginib. This is, again, I, I, had, I, got, I got beat to death. <laughs> I was in cool cast comments section and I I like I don't want to antagonize but you know cool cats like well it's uh, when the moon I'm like it's not the moon it's it's definitely not the moon it's the four star alginib and he's like what is alginib this sounds like astronomy to me or astrology I'm like no it's literally God's creation <laughs> and he literally said it's a concealed day and in saying that he said the word casse meaning conceal, concealed and in saying that it has nothing to do with the moon. I don't care how dark the moon is or how bright the moon is. It has nothing to do with it. It literally has nothing to do with the head of the year or the head of a month or anything. It has to do with that sign in heaven. I, I really I really wish I had thought about researching that. I should have looked. I, I looked to disprove the moon had anything to do with the words Chodesh and um, Kase, which I did, but I forgot to prove the moon had something to do with and the moon under her feet. That has to be the word um, Yarich. That's the word for moon. It has to use the uh, Strong's uh, number 3394 for Yarich. I guarantee, I'm going to go study that, but I guarantee that's what it means. Oh, yeah, let me get back into this. Sorry about that. i just like to clarify things because I get some comments. And I'm like, that's not what I said. All right. This is the concealing day. Kase, I spelled it with an A S. Again, I had a 50-50 shot at it. Down here at the bottom, it's a little... 31, a little 31. If I change, if I don't use a 364 day calendar, what did I do with that? Oh, it is down here. If I don't use, oh, I cut it off with a bar. I messed that up. Okay, I'll have to fix that. But if I don't use this, this exact timeline, it will not land from the flood to the cross. It will not do it. There must be 30 days in Nissan, 30 days in Ayar, and um, 31 days in Sivan. Tammuz must have 30, Av must have 30, and Elul must have 31. I hear people going, Elul only has 28 days. No, it doesn't. It has 31. It has to have 31. It will always have 31. And so, <coughs> uh-oh, <coughs> excuse me. And so, we come down here. <coughs> oh, no. <coughs> Don't start that mess again. All right, we come down here. I think <laughs> now this seven plus 33 days, I wrote it there, but I meant to put it down here, uh, by the way, uh, Sandy, if you're listening to this, this is where the seven and 33 days goes. It is seven days from when Jesus was born on tabernacles. Was tabernacles fulfilled? Partially. Jesus was born here. And I think tabernacles is also going to be his birthday present for the end of everything. Uh, or, I mean, the beginning of uh, the millennium, honestly. Now, Rock Island Books, I want to make a comment because uh, I wasn't getting uh, uh, getting through very clearly in uh, Cool Cat's comments. It's really hard. The comment section is really hard. People don't know you. Um, they don't understand what you're trying to say, and they think you might be a kook. <laughs> you know, you might be crazy in there. It's really difficult. But in there, Rock Island Books, they started talking about Rock Island Books. And these are Rock Island Books, as you know, or maybe don't know, has changed his viewpoint on 2024 to 2023. The reason he cites is very good. Jesus is given a 1,000-year reign, and we have abundantly proven that 2030 is the year of Messiah, that he begins his reign, Right? But Rock Islands has proven at the end it's supposed to go to 3031. What was that extra year for? So what he did was move the thousand years to 3031 and begin tribulation in 2024. And then he read the passage. Satan is given a little season. He's given a little time to deceive these people. We can't be deceived. We're given glorified bodies. The saints of the tribulation, they're given glorified bodies. They can't be deceived. Who? Those people who prosper in the millennium. There's no more curse. 
When you plant a seed, you just go like this, boom, throw it on the ground, and a tree grows up. It's that simple. There is no more weeds, thistles. There's no more pain in childbirth. They'll be having babies and everything. They'll be populating the earth more abundantly than we ever did or could. And we got 8 billion people since the flood. What is that? 4,000 years since the flood? A little bit over 4,000 is it 4,344 years? Something like that. Anyway, 740. But in the last 4,000 years, we've populated this planet up to 8 billion. And I think in that 1,000 years, we're going to populate it quite a bit. But he recognizes that Satan gets it. I'm sorry. To be careful with that. Jesus has his 1,000-year millennium. And that Satan gets his season. When does it happen? If we say that the end is or he says the end is in 3031. Well, he moves a thousand years back. He now agrees that the tribulation will begin in 2023. And in 2030, because it lines up with the temple being destroyed in 70 AD, it's, not refu it's, it's at the point now, before we were like, I'm not sure, a lot of good studies have been done to prove that 2023 is the year that the tribulation begins. This is why we're so excited. Man, do I want to come on here and say, oh, I know it's happening on this day. Period. Get ready. Man, do I want to do that. But God does not want that to happen. He wants there to be doubt up to the point that it happens. Because, not to hide it from you, oh, how I would have gathered you and brought you under my wing and protected you there's a i don't know the exact verse i'm paraphrasing but god just wants us so bad but he doesn't want satan to know he does not want satan to know so it is hidden from him so even this even though i say it out loud most won't but most will not believe it most will say but the moon <laughs> not the moon all right let me get back to the pictures here Anyway, this timeline, you can find it over there where I showed you at uh, endtime-studies.com. And if you forward slash, you can find this timeline exactly. I think if you go in there, you can find it. I think it's, I tried to do it on my phone. All I get is a blurry copy, but she's done a lot of work. And man, do I appreciate that. She is, uh, she's really done uh, this really nicely. Appreciate it. So back here, let's. Okay, I'll do that in a minute. The hidden day, kase. You see, I spelled it with a C because that's the hidden day. But here is the day of concealing. This is the, they're spelled almost identical and they mean almost the same thing. But one of them is a day that's hidden. And the other one is the day that God conceals his bride from the rest of the world. It's the concealing day. And that happens on September the 14th. At 5.47 p.m., eight, yeah, 5.47 p.m., um, Israel time. And I don't, I don't have my watch. I'm pretty sure today's the 13th, so tomorrow. Actually, I do a look. Yep, it's the 13th. Done. Keep forgetting I'm on my phone. So, and another amazing fact is that after this concealing day, it is exactly 10 days from the head of the year to Yom Kippur. It's the 10 days of awe, the 10 days of crazy stuff happening. And again, September the 14th, uh, 15th begins at nightfall on September the 14th at the time of dark, uh, when it goes dark. So, And it is also an added bonus that that is the third Pentecost. It is 50 and seven days. Remember, God says from and, and Pentecost always lands on a Sunday. So seven days later, he says you count from the Sabbath after. Seven days later is Saturday, and then you count 50 days. And I finally got Pentecost worked out. I still don't have Moses uh, coming up and down the mountains quite worked out yet. But I do know he fasted at the same time Jesus fasted. So I have him down here. Um, all right, so let me keep going here. Again, you can go find this time. This thing's amazing. Is she, uh, I don't know, she spent hours on this thing. <laughs> but... Uh, all of us, uh, everyone in like my Discord, I'll put a link in the, I keep forgetting to do that. I'll put a link in the Discord. You can go in there. I wish I personally had more time. My time is spent trying to disprove my own timeline, which I can't so far. I literally am trying to disprove it, but everything I find keeps proving it to its accuracy and every date I find just drops right in perfectly. 
So um, from, let's see, oh, from the last Revelation 12 sign to September the 14th, which is the, the, the Sabbath, the last Sabbath. And notice that, I don't know what this, yeah, that's Saturday. That's cool. So the last Saturday, of course, well, that wouldn't work out because this is Gregorian days. And, and I don't know if the calendar was correct in 2017 or not. So but anyway, look down here. It's five years, 11 months, and 23 days, leaving seven days to make a full six years. Is this a day that we're taking and then seven days later, the great multitude is taken? I don't know. Remember, God's going to turn his attention back to Israel. Five years, 11 months, 23 days. Seven days after this is the 21st. And the 21st is within the 10 days of awe. So I don't know if that works out. All right. The scientific truth. Now, this I found this, and I thought this was so cool, and this is so true, and this is what exactly has happened with the moon. Honestly, this is what happened. A new scientific truth does not triumph by convincing its opponents and making them see the light, but rather because its opponents eventually die and a new generation grows up that is familiar, familiar with it. This moon theory took the Romans Hundreds of years to get them to follow it in 400 BC. The real story in the stars, part 18, Pegasus, the winged horse. And remember, um, there's a website up there you can go to to read this whole story. And it says, now, in Revelation 19.11, now I saw heaven opened and behold, a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he judges and makes war. I want you to notice down here in the pictograph that um, the second fish, the one that's on the horizon, the other one is the bride. It's going up. But the second fish is protected, just like Elisha was when he received the cloak and a double portion. So was the, the saints of the tribulation protected. It's a rough time, but they, God loves them, and he will gather them under his wing, and he will protect them in the tribulation just like the second fish the wing of pegasus is protecting the fish here again we see in pegasus yet another creature that has never existed in nature but we have folklore about it don't we we all hear about this uh this horse with wings like others in the heavenly story it is a combination of two different species that have two completely different planes of existence Number one, a horse that is earthbound, and number two, a bird that lives in the heavens. That's our Jesus with his dual nature. He is 100% God and 100% man. Unlike the other constellations depicting his dual manner, however, this creature shows no sign of death anywhere and is flying effortlessly through the heavens. There is not a whole lot we glean simply from the lore of this figure, but the individual stars speak volumes. Now, I've told you there are four stars of Pegasus. The wing of Pegasus covers the second fish, the saints of the tribulation. And the four stars that make up the box of Pegasus, you'll see on the right-hand side there, very small, but you'll see, maybe I can, oh yeah, Algenib. Algenib right there. That star will skirt along the horizon every single year without fail, 71.2 degrees on March 16th and on September the 14th. It is the concealing day and it is the hidden day. Both the Greeks and the Romans called this sign Pegasus coming quickly, joyfully. What does that sound like? The promise of the second coming, of course. We've seen this in previous star names that speak about Jesus returning to earth. God reiterates that promise in Pegasus. Now, let's check the names of the stars in this constellation. He goes through all the names of the stars. And uh, basically, each star has a meaning. The brightest star, Markab, is a Hebrew name. It is located in the forward edge of the left wing and means returning from afar. The second brightest star, Sheet, is also a Hebrew word that has that have 
seen, uh, also a Hebrew word that have seen before in both Capricorn and Aquarius, it means him who goes and returns. The third brightest star bearing an Aramaic name is Algenib, who carries, located at the trailing edge of the left wing of this improbable creature. Its name reminds us that Jesus bears us up on eagle's wings. Continuing down the brightness scale, we come to the fourth brightest star called and if the branch located on the creature's nostrils and reminds us of the verse in Jeremiah 23, 5, which says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will raise uh, that I will raise to David a branch of righteousness. A king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. Jesus is that branch. The next star in the order of brightness is Homan, means the watcher. As listed in modern astronomy books, it is given the Aramaic name the Great King and is located on the shoulder of Pegasus. Another star in Aramaic, Matar, meaning to cause to overflow. It follows along with the meaning of the previous star and the water. As you know, water is a type of the word of God as well as of his blessing. Matar was considered by ancient Arabs to be the rain star. That's uh, some of their stuff. So are you sensing a pattern here? This, is me uh, this message is interjected and reiterated over and over that is... Uh, that this great companion who suffered and died for all mankind, paid for every sin, conquered death, and went back to heaven. He is called the branch, the king, who went away but is returning from afar away. He carries water, will cause blessings to the ones who receive the water to overflow. He, he comes quickly. That coming is coupled with great joy, accompanied by a flock of kids or goats. What does all that sound like? Jesus' promise of both the rapture and the second coming with his church in tow. It is a perfect portrait of 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 4, 54, which you can read at your leisure. Church, it's clear. We can look forward to a great hope in Jesus calling for his church to rapture us out of this world before judgment is unleashed on all of the ungodly of this planet. Oh, I was showing you here how Israel will, in fact, change time in October by an hour. So the hour that they're looking at is called Daylight Savings Time. It's actually an hour earlier. That's why uh, the four-star Pegasus will be appearing to be uh, one hour later than what uh, what it actually is. So I said 1047 here in Florida, Eastern Standard Time. It's probably 1147 because we've got to move one hour. So um, it's six. 22, uh, yeah, 6.46 p.m. in Israel, sunset on September the 14th. It would actually be 5.46 in that uh, Enoch calendar's timeline that I showed you. So just think about it being uh, 11.47 or 11.46 instead. I showed you there. Okay, I made this. I think this is my la almost my last one. Whoops. I want to show you something that came to my mind last night as I was going to sleep and I was like, how can I, they are now stating, again, they are wrong, that the first day of creation was on Wednesday and it was not on September the 14th. They're, they're making the claim that the first day will be September the 15th. And I'm like, no, we, <laughs> we already know the first day. The first day is September the 11th. It is a Sunday. It's the first day of creation. September the 12th is a Monday. It is the second day of creation. September the 13th is a Tuesday. It is the third day of creation. On Wednesday, God clearly puts the sun, moon, and stars in a specific order to begin time. Time begins here. This is also a Sabbath. Wednesday is the middle week Sabbath. On Wednesday is when... Um, day four is when time was created. And 182 days earlier from this moment right here is March the 16th, the day of equal parts, the day that star also skirts along the horizon. The first day of the year, of course, would be the next day. That's the first date. You have New Year's Eve and then you have New Year's Day. New Year's Day is the first day. New Year's Eve would be technically what we would call the Sabbath. 
and the next day would be the first day, New Year's Day. September the 15th is always and never changes Rosh Hashanah. On the sixth day, God created man, September the 16th, which is a Friday. And on this Sabbath, God rested on Saturday. Now, I said, well, are there any other seven-day events that would match up perfectly on this timeline to perfectly of the creation? And it does. Jesus' triumphal entry was on March the 26th. Now, remember, 10 days earlier was the Sabbath, the, the day of equal parts. Jesus entered his triumphal entry on the 26th. On Wednesday, Jesus went to the cross, the same day that time was created, on March the 30th. It's always March the 30th. Jesus goes to, the, well, one time, but I mean, the, the anniversary of this date will always be March the 30th in 30 AD at 3 p.m., all threes. Imagine my surprise when this is what came out when I discovered this. The cross is a Wednesday. Jesus spent 84 hours. Everybody says 72. He did not. He died at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and he arose at some point at the night, Saturday night coming into Sunday, at some point, and I believe it was 84 hours. 84 hours in the grave. He paid three and a half days. He was down there three and a half days. And he rose... Jesus rises on a Sunday, April the 3rd. It, the anniversary is always April the 3rd. So I'm like, okay, let's go back and take a look at Lazarus. Does it overlay? As a matter of fact, I think every seven-day story will overlay exactly just like this. Lazarus was sick. Mary and Martha sent messengers to Jesus. It took them two days. To get to Jesus. It was a two day walk. Two days later, on the 16th, Lazarus dies. Jesus says, Are there not 12 hours in the day? Jesus admits he is dead. Lazarus dies on a Wednesday. Mary and Martha bury Lazarus on a Wednesday. On the 17th is the new year. March the 17th, which was moved back in Exodus 12. Remember, Jesus does not move on the 17th or the 18th. doesn't budge. He sits still. Why does he sit still? He knows that March the 17th and 18th are Rosh Hashanah. It was moved. Lazarus dies on the 16th. He sits still for two days. And on the 19th and on the 20th, he walks where Lazarus is, remember, it took them two days after Lazarus died, I mean, after Lazarus came, became sick, to walk over. They did not know that Lazarus had died because they were walking for two days. Jesus is the one that told us that Lazarus, in fact, had died. He sits still for two days, walks for two days, and then Lazarus is resurrected on March the 20th. This is the perfect picture of Jesus right here. Jesus is resurrected also and sees Thomas in the upper room. You see that the great eighth day is, is uh, Thomas in the upper room, infinity. Uh, Jesus rises on the eighth day because he goes, he is, uh, let me see here, what did he start out with? Uh, the triumphal entry is exactly eight days on the eighth day. So let me see. Uh, I wanted to show you uh, Al-Janib there. That's where Al-Janib is. And the, the dotted line is the horizon. I don't have this set for Israel. I just wanted to show you where it was, I guess. Oh, and I wanted to show you that the wing, in fact, does cover that second fish that's on the horizon. You see the Neptune down there? You see Neptune right there? That wing is covering the saints of the tribulation. They get a double portion. They get a cloak, and they'll get a great understanding. Okay, and this will be the... Uh, picture that I put on the front of it, the concealing day, the day God conceals us. I pray. I pray this is it. I pray this is it. I pray that, uh, you know, by tomorrow we're gone. We're going to keep studying and keep searching. Um, I don't know. I mean, of course, I have the timeline, and so it never changes, so I just will keep looking, but I don't know. I can't really see much going past 
honestly tomorrow. I, I really don't see it. But uh, Cool Cat in his uh, comment section said he has a bet going on with flat earthers or something. I don't know what he was talking about, but I guess there's a, and I don't know how he's going to get this money if we're in heaven, but uh, he says, I'm going to put you in the pool with the no moon and the, you know, make you a bet like I did them and that uh, it is the moon. And so getting that moon idea out of their minds and uh, for a guy like, uh, honestly, uh, cool cat that does the kind of research he does. I mean, it would be so simple to look up, you know, the Strong's word for Rosh Chodesh, Yarich, and Kasei. They're completely different words. And to see if they're, in fact, used in um, the Psalms and Proverbs. And what word is used in talking about the moon under her feet in um, Revelation 12. I'm going to go look that up, by the way. Guarantee it's Kasei. Guarantee it's Kasei. Uh, sorry. Guarantee it's Yarich. It is not to say it's yeah, reach. It's a completely different word, and you won't find that word used in relationship to the head of the month, the head of the year, none of that. So, all right. Um, I don't think we have time for a live, honestly. I just threw this video up here so you could see my thoughts on this. The Tribulation Saints, you're going to need this information, if I'm right, which I think I am. But you're going to need this type of information to uh, to figure out when your time is. And I don't know how long that is. I honestly am seeing the 10 days of, in prison in that, that it speaks to one of the churches as being that the 10 days later is uh, the Day of Atonement. So I don't know. And it's a Pentecost. It's the Day of Atonement. It's the Pentecost. And it's at the end of the 10 days of all. It just so much sounds like it could be the saints going uh, just 10 days later. But we'll see. All right, uh, RepoMan64, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody except the Lord in your heart. All of this information and everything that we do, trying to determine when this is, doesn't amount to a hill of beans until you go into that room into your prayer closet and accept the Lord and accept his free gift. And nothing else matters. Knowing any of this means nothing until you've done that first. Getting a strong, firm foundation in the word of God and understanding what God is trying to tell us uh, takes time. But the first and that's the easiest thing in the universe, accept the Lord. It's coming. The day is coming. It's almost here. And so it could happen in any second. Let me get off here and upload this before it happens. All right, RepoMan64, we'll chat with you again later.